Hello everyone, I recently uploaded a video where I demonstrated a web shop that I built using Medusa.js and a custom payment module currently under development. And this payment module would allow the customers to purchase products from the web shop using Solana cryptocurrency instead of more traditional payment methods such as credit card or PayPal payment methods that rely on a third party payment processor. This module, on the other hand, it does not depend on any third parties. It is pure P2P. And as you can see here in the background, I am actually checking out a order with a QR code and paying with it with Solana. In a second, you'll see my mobile phone coming up on the screen here, finalizing the payment using a wallet app that I have installed on my phone. And in the last video, I also said that anyone interested could get early access to this tool and become beta testers, closed beta testers. A few people reached out and I had some help from a few other people. And now it's time to share the module. So I have actually packaged it as an NPM package and you can download and install it directly into your Medusa project and start accepting Solana cryptocurrency on your web shop. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly all the steps needed to do to deploy it. We're going to deploy it on railway. So let's get started. All right, just a quick warning before we begin with the tutorial. It is going to be a little bit fast paced to not make this video too long. So expect to have to stop the video a few times to see what I'm doing. Additionally, I'll be posting a link to this article right here. And in this article, there will be all the steps described with text all links to all resources, all text that you need to copy paste, variables and everything. So use this as a resource supporting you in the deploy process because the video is going to be a little bit fast. So don't hesitate pausing it and don't hesitate visiting this uh, blog article to help you. All right, without further ado, let's get started with the on-screen tutorial. Let's head over to my blog to find my Medusa.js deploy template. It is in this article right here, link in the description. You just scroll all the way down to the purple button and there it is. You're going to click it and that will take us to the deploy template itself. Click deploy now and we don't have to worry about any of the configuration of any of these services. They are pre-configured. You just click deploy and wait for Railway to do its job. This will take roughly 15 minutes. I'm speeding up the video recording a little bit. Um, but once you have all green check marks, we will need to get you your own fork of my repository. So we're going to have to select the backend service, go into settings and find the eject button. Now click the eject button and you should see your GitHub user. If you don't see that, that's because your account is not connected. But if you do see it, select it and click eject and you'll now be getting your own fork. This will take a few seconds, but it should be rather quick. And now you see here the source repo is pointing to your own repo. So you can click that to go to your new fork. We're going to have to clone this fork locally and add the Solana pay branch because it didn't come automatically with the fork. Unfortunately, GitHub doesn't do that. So I'm opening up a terminal here and then I'm simply cloning the new fork to my local. And then we're going to have to run a few commands to add the branch. And all of these commands are available for copy pasting in the blog article linked to earlier. So you can see what I do here on the screen. I'm simply copy pasting all these command lines one by one, and that will effectively add the Solana pay branch. So you just go and copy what I'm doing. It is exactly the same things you need to paste in. And once we have that and we push it, the Solana branch will now be added also to your fork. And you can see that in just a second on the GitHub page, I'm going to refresh it and then we are ready to go. Lastly, we are going to push it and that is the final command that we need to do. All right, it looks like it has been pushed. Let's head over back to GitHub and you can see already that something popped up that a branch was added and cannot see it here, but if I refresh, it should be available. 
and now it is. Now we have the Solana Pay branch where the module is pre-installed, pre-configured, and also the storefront has an implementation for it. So there is no work for you to do. All right, let's head over back to Railway and refresh the page to get the branches available. Select the backend, go to setting and find the Solana Pay branch. Then do the same for the storefront. We need the Solana Pay branch on both of the services. And we're not going to deploy this just yet because we need a few variables for the backend. So go over to the variables tab, open the raw editor. And here we're going to add a few things. So now I'm going to open up the clone project in VS Code because there is a template file there with the variables. And also we need a little script for creating the passphrase. So first CD into the backend and then run pmpm install or npm install if you use npm. Then we can open up the template file to see the variables that we need to add and we can clean this template up a little bit. I'll just uncomment them here. Oh, these are not the ones. They are actually the ones below here. Yeah, so I'm going to clean these up and add my own values and you're going to have to add your own values. And for the URL, you can just leave it as it is. It's for the DevNet and then you paste in your cold storage wallet address, just any cold storage wallet that you have that is on the, the DevNet, of course. And then for the passphrase, we're going to generate it using a script that I have installed in the uh, Medusa Solana payment module. So you can just copy the command that I uh, use right here and it will generate the passphrase for you. The command is also in the blog post for easy copy pasting. And you will see here when I run the command, I get now this 20 word passphrase that we can use. So I'll just paste that in right here. And now the only thing that we need lastly is the CoinGecko API key. And this is used to convert from Euro or US dollars to Solana in real time. All right, let's paste in our clipboard in the raw editor. And then I'll show you where you get the API key in just a second. You open a browser tab, search for CoinGecko, and it should be the first result in Google. So this is the page where you want to create an account. Browse around, see if you can find the API key. If you can't find it, just ask ChatGPT and it will tell you exactly how you find it. It can be a little bit tedious. Once you have found your API key, go back into Railway and then paste it in. It should look a little bit something like this. Gonna blur mine out and then we can simply update the variables. We have one change now in the storefront and we have five changes in the backend. That is all we need. So now we're actually ready to deploy the changes. I'm going to speed up the process by pausing the video recording. And as soon as I'm done, the build will be ready. And then we can do the last setting, which is enabling the Solana payment in the backend. All right, here we are. So I'll navigate to the backend URL and we need to add slash app to visit the dashboard. And once that's loaded, we are going to need our Credentials, so head over to variables, find the email, copy it to clipboard and paste it in. Do the same for the password, find it, copy to clipboard and paste it in. Now we're ready to log in. Once in the admin dashboard, head over to settings. We are going to modify our region settings. So go to regions and then click edit on the active region. I have Europe. In here, you're going to select the Solana payment. If you don't see this, the setup was not correct, but you should see it and you can hit save. And that's all we need to do for the backend. Let's open up the storefront to see that everything works. So I'm clicking the storefront service, going over to deployments, finding the URL, and that should take us to our web shop. Now I'm going to speed up this next step dramatically because this was what was running in the beginning of the video here. I'm just adding some products to my shopping cart and going to the checkout page. And once we are at the checkout page right here, we should now see the pay with Solana option and you click it and continue to payment. And this is when all the magic happens. So the card is being converted from Euro using the CoinGecko API to Solana. We see now a price, we see a one-time wallet address and the QR code with a timer. And the timer is the payment session expiration, which is added newly. Uh, and this makes sure that the price will update after five minutes. So in case the Solana to Euro price changes a lot, the customer will not have locked in a better price. 
once the transaction has been made, this is the side that the shopper will see, order confirmation page. Let's head back to the admin dashboard and inspect the order that was created. So I'm going to orders and I have one here from John Doe who just placed this order. And we can see that it is payment captured 30 euro, but it doesn't show any Solana amount. So where do we see any of that? If you open up the JSON inspector, we can see some details about the order and under the payment collection is where we want to look. And if you scroll a little bit down, you'll see that there is a field called payments. And if we open that one, that should be just one payment. And under this, we have the payment session itself, which holds the payment session ID. This is internally used in the module. And then we have the raw amount. But if we open the data field, that's where the actual Solana values are. So here is the converted amount. There is also the received amount. So what the user sent and then we have this one-time wallet address and let's just open up the Solana Explorer and look up my cold storage wallet to see that the funds were successfully transferred to the cold storage wallet. I'm going to tap back over to VS Code and copy my cold storage wallet to look it up and let's change to DevNet because that's where everything was going on. I'm going to paste in this address and we should see a recent transaction. So if I scroll down here, it is now 10 minutes ago, I received one and then I have some earlier from previous tests. And if we scroll down, we should see the amount should match more or less the amount that we expected. So there it is 0 0.18 and then minus some fees. And that is added to our balance of two Solana in the cold storage wallet. So our funds are now secure in the cold storage wallet, but a clever viewer pointed out that this approach of automatically transferring funds to the cold storage wallet actually compromises business privacy a little bit. And uh, I'll show you exactly what that means. So I'll copy the one-time wallet address and then we'll do a little bit more blockchain exploration. So we are now searching the one-time wallet address, which the customer have access to. And we can see there's two transactions made with this address and we will inspect both of them. The balance is empty because it was emptied. But if we look at the first one here, scroll down, we can see that it was sent from a wallet with 16 Solana. That was my the one I had on my mobile phone. And then if we go back and look at the other one, we can see here, if we scroll all the way down, that the funds are now transferred to a wallet with two Solana and that is the cold storage wallet. This will for sure be a concern to some shop owners as this is considered sensitive information, business insights, but all problems have a technical solution and I already have a few ideas in mind. Anyway, that's gonna conclude this video. This was really just a deploy tutorial, how to get started with the beta version of the Solana payment module for Medusa JS. You now know how to launch it uh, on Railway, but you can also visit the NPM page. This is it. And here is the module with some instructions on how you install it into an existing Medusa project of your own. Anyway, that's going to be all for now. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.